10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Seconds remaining. Room master. Radiant team pick. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Sack. Prepare for battle. Thirty seconds to battle. The battle begins. Oh, 
First blood, and you had better get used to it. Denied! Статом мы видим, что Акс все-таки потеснее на этом лайне. Ну, о, Акс собирает все, и при этом очень... Dyer's top tower is under attack. South as well. Sakshka's first rotation. 
Master is going to be pretty key. Most of the time you want to wait until you have a Blink Dagger, but I think the natural, like the static laning phase is favoring Ninjas of Pajamas too much that they need to make early rotations. So while you don't normally want to do so on a Brewmaster, you want to pick up your Blink first. He does need to try and catch out, particularly this aggro trialing, which you know is going to be playing so aggressively. Man, BU is just abandoned the top lane. Like They're coming back now with the Dazzle. But yeah, you're, you're right. I actually almost feel like you're talking before about like ganking up SF, like moving in towards the mid with the Earthshaker and maybe finding a kill there. But I almost feel like the Brewmaster has to make the most out of this nighttime, use that Fog of War and get in behind the Tier 1 tower and fight up against NIP as they push the issue. It's only one point up an Edict, that's why they don't want to use the Fortification just yet, but with the Undying Tombstone down, they need more help here. Minus gonna pop, Hans can stays alive, he doesn't have Soul Rift leveled up, but it doesn't matter with the Tombstone, now he actually gets it and uh, well, he either can kill off Necroman or heal himself up. Either way, Hans can pick up a double kill and come with me is on the run. No one from Bur from Burton United has come to help out this top lane. So come with me is all alone. He at least dodges the split earth. They could have waited for the paralyzing cask, but he's going to die to the lightning of era. So a three man wipe for NIP for no cost. Yeah, pretty easy uh, kills there for Ninjas of Pajamas, knowing that, hey, Dragonite's are pretty static uh, laning phase kind of hero. He just sits there, doesn't really rotate too much. He actually waits for the enemy hero to rotate out, and then he usually pushes down the tower. That's his big play. Uh, unfortunately, it means he can't help out the defensive tri lane in any way. The Brewmaster failing to get the rune meant he didn't have any uh, mana whatsoever to make a rotation atop to help them out. They really need to get Paris some mana now, and have him make that rotation up to top lane. I think the best play they have is go for a Fissure Block and then have Brew TP in and benefit off of that one. Otherwise, I don't see an opening for him. Like, oh. is he somehow going to be able to surprise the SF? Uh, I don't think so. Like, no. I, I, Axe is going to call that rotation pretty quickly. Their only two plays is basically rotate the Brewmaster top and upset that aggro trend lane or get the Earthshaker into middle lane and they somehow get a pick off on SF, but it's a hard hero to kill at this point. Yeah, and SF won't even fight them. That SF will stick where exactly where he was just now, which is in the jungle, while the rest of NIP push with Edict, which is still only level 1. Uh, we've still got a very kill orientated lineup here from NIP because we've got the 3 points up in the lightning. The Sing Sing's going to make his way up, but he got, he got spotted. They actually left, and this is the beautiful thing for NIP. They left a very aggressive Observer Ward, which watches the movement up through the river, which spotted out Sing Sing, as well as the movement coming in very early from the jungle area. Oh, so yeah. this movement atop top with four players from BU, they can easily defend. It looks like bottom lane. There's also some fun. There's Necromancer. He's going to TP in here. This stops the push on top, but Unison Farm's still very, very tanky. So it's going to take a lot to bring him down. He's just going to outrun him. And, uh, well, there's the Tornado. Going to finally send him up and towards the air. Now they can go for the Rocket Barrage. He got the call off. The Rocket Barrage is still going to do its effect. He can't get close to do anything, so Necromancer's still going to end up uh, sorry, Unison Farm's gonna go down, as Necroman does find the kill on him. So this top lane push is stopped, you've killed off the Axe, you've rotated two players down. Is this still worth it for, for BU? Uh, it depends on whether or not Ninjas of Pajamas actually force down that top tower, which doesn't look like they will. So I would say it's definitely worth it for Burden United, solely because they're behind already. Uh, Sing Sing, well, couldn't actually stop him there, who managed to pick up the Bounty Rune. As I was saying before, it's really hard to shut down uh, the SF at this point in time, not because he's a hard kill to get um, if you actually get on top of him, but solely because he's just going to be spamming out raises. The creep wave comes in, one raise, two raise, and then he goes back to farming up jungle. So you actually have to plan some sort of an invasion in order to shut him down. Looks like they're still going to get that top tower, though, with the Die Ball Edict to level 2. I like how uh, Era has complete faith in Seal Kid to always set him up for that split earth. He says, I can deal with just level one. I don't need the increased AoE. Mm -hmm. just being a bit of a nuisance. He's just leeching the experience not the farm off the SF. Sitting on that high ground area. Yeah, this this top tier one tower's days is now Dyer's completely numbered. Tower. Seconds is all that's really remaining for them. Uh, Seal Kid, Paralyzing Dyer's Cow's gonna fly. The Edict still kill off the towers that are running past him. But call me as bail the hell out of there. And again, BU don't want to bring any support. In fact, Soshka, he's behind Limp, so Sing Sing doesn't have Dragon Form. It's still on cooldown, but he's going to find Limp in the tree line. But this is when the mass TPs come in. They actually stop the Undying TP. As BU do pull back out, but Steel Kid will complete his. Yeah, I kind of like that just because Steel Kid can afford to um, maybe get away from that top lane. He can go ahead and like maybe go bottom or pull or something. They've already won top lane. It's always kind of the interesting question, right? What do you do with your aggro trialing after it's succeeded? Do you rotate it? Oftentimes, you'll see it rotate to bottom, 
-hmm. then push out that bottom tier one tower, but occasionally you'll see teams continue to pressure that top lane and try and go for the tier two. Uh, I thought that might have been an option for them here, but it doesn't look like it. No. In, in this case, I don't think it really is an option, because you're still battling up against a very tanky style lineup that could bring more support up. So I don't, th I don't feel the need for the risk, and it's not the way NIP would normally play it. They want to bring down tier one after tier one, then establish good war control. No, you got your mech up, then you start pushing into the tier two towers when you're feeling a lot more confident on your cause. And in this case, the easiest place to rotate to is the tier one tower in the mid. That way you can try and establish still some level of presence inside the dire jungle and let the axe do his thing, because the axe is still fine. He's got a Vanguard dump. Well, he may not be fine now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with that clap into the split, they're probably going to end up losing him. At the same time, Mindnut's going to die on this top lane. Uh, Shallow Grave's going to slow it down, so we can watch our units Oh god, he, oh, he actually got... He got the Gyrocopter, the stun will come in, and Seal is going to keep him alive, letting up that Voodoo Restoration, and they're actually buying him the time. They haven't cancelled the salve, of course, Soshka can't get close enough to it. He'll go for the clap, but now it's actually undying into the ultimate form. And they'll chase after him, the call will bring him back. There is the Culling Blade of Varvel, and uh, well, there it is. Wow. Axe gets a double dunk to start off, and they may not be done yet, because Limp is chasing after Come With Me. If he gets one more attack with a long range, there it is! He actually picks off the retreating Earth. Shaker and NIP just getting so much advantage in now all lanes. Yeah, I love that. Uh, a small little play there. Hanskin, who had a Mango. Mango's great for Undying, by the way, because he's such a mana intensive hero in team fights. Um, he actually fed the Mango over to the Axe, and that's why he was able to get the uh, both the Berserker's Call and the Culling Blade. He didn't have mana otherwise, so that was what gave that extra little help to get the kill onto Sokska. And uh, now 8-2, to two, Ninjas and Pajamas a dominating display so far, and I don't think Bird United have the strength to contest. Wow, the drop of the Tombstone for this, you know some fun? Okay, he overset his welcome, he's trying to creep skip it out. Now the armor's gonna help him out from the call, but he's not spinning enough. My Nuts is dropping low. And in fact, actually, he may even drop it though. He's got, the, he's got enough of a heal. Or maybe he doesn't know with the decay. He's actually going to die. The tombstone stays alive and actually gets denied by Hanskin. They can't get anything. Even Ira's going to arrive for the Vinda. It's blocked in Sokka. He had no way out. Necroman will arrive for the call down, but Seelkin's also arrived. Going into the death ward, he's going to kill off Necroman in time. Ira picks up the double kill. And it's a disaster for Burden United. You might have killed off the axe. But at what cost? Yeah, I, I didn't think they could contest Ninjas of Pajamas, and sure enough, it shows in that team fight where uh, even with superior numbers, they end up losing out quite heavily. Middle lane, Sing Sing does manage to push down that tower. They're going to try and nuke him down. Oh my god, the decay plus the double nukes. It's just so much. Like, that's a Dragon Knight. That's a Dragon Knight with three points up in Dragon's Blood. He should not be going down in these cases, but. De Decay oh. is just so good versus uh, obviously setting up the big time nukes of other heroes. So he <laughs> decreases your HP and then all of a sudden Dyer's double raises enough to get the kill. And Dragon's Blood, that physical armor reduction, is not going to do much for you then. 12 to 3, 13 minutes in. Man, this game is ninjas and pajamas. I expected them to win this game, whether it was just from the start. And then I looked at the draft and I felt pretty confident there. Yep. But I did not expect um, such a early lead by by 13 minutes yeah this is this is pretty brutal like sometimes the aggro tri lanes work for you and the funny thing is at the very very start for nip the aggro tri lane was successful but you're not gonna say it was crushing up against BU. like BU got forced back out later into the early game like i'm talking five minutes to ten minutes into the game when they started harassing him with the edict and i'm still looking back to the point where BU lost the three men on top lane and didn't have anyone come to help them. They were too busy just trying to secure their own lanes. And the presence of these of the of the off laner and the mid lane just hasn't really been felt. Like Sing Sing's now gonna come in. They're gonna try and force this top tower. But at the same time, NIP are happy for the sacrifice. They drop down the Undying Tombstone, and they're just going to go for Roshan. The sad thing is, right, they're expecting the Axe to initiate onto Dragonite. They're going to try and counter that. The problem with that is they're not actually pushing down this Tier 1 tower fast enough. They could conceivably uh, not even get this Tier 1 tower, have Roshan fall, and still have Nyx Well, they just came back in with a TP from Witch Doctor. So yeah, the rest of the team could come if they want to.
Latrak also, you were talking about the fact he's, he's so squishy. You got the soul booster build coming up, so Latrak's gonna get bigger, and here they come. So Axe jumps in, instantly nice. stunned by Sing Sing. So he'll be able to destroy the tower as well into the hands of Sing Sing as the Brewmaster already will cause a little bit of chaos too. You know some farm, he's able to get far enough back, wants to go for the coldness for the armor, but he's already dead while they send the Witch Doctor up, and this is a great fight for Burton United. NIP bit up a lot more than they could chew, and the SM up into the uh, Hanskin. Can't really do much. He can turn around for perhaps like a three-man decay, which he is able to get off, and now Era will finally arrive. The lightning and Lynch can turn off the damage. Hans can still locked in the tree line. He had a lot of life to get through, and they will be able to find the kill. There's a triple kill for Necroman. He won't be able to survive. Era had the pulse over to ensure the kill. And the Fisher, well, okay, yeah, that was a little bit too high up. Cup with me now gonna get spotted. And Era, the stun is actually not there in time. Minus is also hanging on the other side of the tree line. They don't know where he is. So he waits with the Observer Ward. He has to wait for the Radiant Creep Wave to leave before he can too. It uh, was still, I mean, Ninjas of Pajamas, maybe a bit greedy trying to save that Tier 1 tower. I know I said that they could probably defend it, and sure enough, they thought they could defend it too. The problem was, Era didn't have a TP, right? Once Era is there, like, boom, the team fight is easily theirs to be had, and Burn United have to just try and mass TP out, but, uh, they, they just kind of got ahead of themselves a bit. You know, some fun. Jumping onto Sasha, they can get this kill. Yep, he almost missed the call, but uh, stopped himself halfway through it, which holds the Brewmaster in position long enough for both the Death Ward as well as the Culling Blade to finish the job. And that means no Blink Dagger. Uh, come that with is me. huge. Now Blink, Call, and he's going to drag him back as far as possible. So in range of left, that's a beautifully played by Yunus. Yep, absolutely. Now with their four man, they could easily take this tier two tower in the bottom lane where they already have some pretty good aggressive vision standing up. But uh, going back to it, that pick off on the Brewmaster was very key because it shuts down the Blink Dagger for Burden United. The initiation of the Brewmaster is what sets up uh, alongside the Earthshaker, sets up the Gyrocopter for success. And them not being able to have that Blink slow on multiple heroes for the call down is the only chance that they had to be able to contest Ninjas of Jamis in these two fights. Well, here goes your tier 2 tower on, on bottom lane. BU decides to fortify to try and slow it down, but they're not in really any position to try and defend this. Especially when they got their Dire Creep Wave just held out. In effect, if MIP feel confident enough, they can just go high ground. Yeah, I mean, they have the Aegis, they might as well use it. And you still got the mech behind this lineup too. This is what I was talking about with, with uh, NIP, the early injection of money. You just find these utility items that keep letting you fight longer and longer. And the Creep Wave's not even dying to the tower attacks that, that quickly because the restoration was there from Seal Kid. And that kind of positioning is still perfect for Era because he's in range of Diabolic Edict and nothing else. So it means Diabolic Edict only hits the tower and uh, does a good chunk of damage too. Another two minutes to use that Aegis. They may not try and push uphill with it. Uh, I think it's unnecessary. It's an unnecessary risk at this point in time. They can wait for the second Roshan, really. Yeah. For now, just get bigger and better items. You know, some farm. Actually, interested to see what he wants to build into here. Like, does he think about getting like the coupler together? Do we get the Crimson Guard? with the mech as well just to try and come up high ground or he's, he's got a crowd ton of money like it's still the 2000 gold there and on bottom lane well limp that's a haste rune to sf he's going to chase come with me into the tree line and uh chase him up in fact he'll get make sure there's no way to run out of this one there's still another teammate of his which was down a little bit further south but tp'd all the way back to base for soshka so just leaves come with me for dead and a uh, free Bloodstone charge for the Leshrac in the process. So those kind of pickoffs are, they're all already, you know, really bad for Burn United, but it gets even worse when you've got that Bloodstone on a Leshrac who's going to be rapidly just expending that mana now just because he's got a, such a high amount of mana regeneration. He can afford to burst down waves real quickly. He's going to farm up even faster. Uh, Limp, I like the S&Y pickup here. So it's a pretty stat heavy item on top of the mech. It pretty much means he's unkillable in a lot of situations. A little bit of a chase from the axe coming out. NIP. Limp. Yep. He's going to wind up here on six. Oh, no. He canceled it. He canceled right. halfway through. He's got support coming in from the axe, but the axe. Okay. I think he was trying to move close enough that he could just blink up the come with me, but then realize the path thing isn't good enough. But Limp doesn't care. Five or four hits in one race. Finds the kill. And then the call on the Sosuka. And he cannot split in time. There's too much damage coming out from the Shadow Fiend. So they take two very quick kills onto him. Suppose they didn't get the hero they wanted, which was Sing Sing, but you still got... You still got two and probably the tier two tower in mid. 
So going back to your question earlier about Yonosumpan and his item build, I believe he should go Crimson Guard. Crimson Guard is incredibly good for his gyrocopter uh, and the flag cannon. Uh, but I would also say that Aghanims is still a possibility for him. When you have an axe that is so very, very far ahead, the big stat increase from Aghanims, particularly the mana, uh, is super helpful. Plus, when you are dealing with such low HP heroes, the Culling Blade kill threshold being increased even further just gives you more opportunities for dunks. So, I would say, like, normally you wouldn't go for it in axe in this situation. Crimson Guard, for me, would be a must. But in this case, they're so far ahead that Aghanims could just kind of be the, uh, the Nothin. The, the nail that seals the coffin. <laughs> uh, Sing Sing coming in with the Shadow Blade. I mean, trying to catch up to Limp. Limp's got no mana here. In fact, now he's going to get Dragon Tail stunned up. And where's the support really arrived from? In fact, Limp now going to go back up to the to the lane. Gets clapped up by a Sasha. They commit the split. And while Era stuns over on Sing Sing, Limp, he does get stunned up himself. And the Fear Jet will finally fly in from Kamui putting him down. Seal could, couldn't get there in time to give the rest the, uh, yeah, the Voodoo Restoration up. Yeah, look how many hits it took for them to, to kill that SF, though, between the mech and the SNY. He basically took, like, I don't know, eight different shots from the Dragonite, plus uh, two Breathe Fires, a Fissure, and uh, a significant amount of damage from the Brewmaster as well. Also, B, you're going to try and force the issue even further. Run dying, getting hit up pretty heavily. He's going to get... The oh, there's the Echo Slam. With the Jarrah up the call down, they have enough. A Yudas of fun. Because he jumped in the back. They're trying to keep my nuts controlled, so he cannot get the Shallow Grave off on Sing Sing, which means they do find this kill. Silky taking some fair damage from Cumberly, but then Limp buys back into the fight. They're going to use their money to win this one. And Burden United, they will be able to TP out their remaining heroes, so it's only two loss. They can't get there in time to get the sun off. You got to give it to my nuts. He's always found those hiding places. Uh, when the team fight has gone sour, he's been able to get himself away almost every single time. But yeah, still a nasty fight for Burn United, despite the fact that he started off with the upper hand. Really great counter initiation from Jonas Fan that made that fight for Ninjas of Pajama so much easier. It basically set up the Witch Doctor for that um, that ward. Yep. Has there actually been a death ward that's even been cancelled? I kind of feel like every time I've seen it come off... Like In this, this tournament, it seems <laughs> like never. It seems like it never happens. It's just with with at least this game. I'm never seeing a Fissure come close enough to him. Uh, Kawabi is normally trying to use this to control up the other cores of NIP, not looking for the supports to stun up. And then there's nothing else to really throw. Like, what's your last rem remaining range stun? Oh, Yoda some fun. He's caught. Come with me. That's going to be another easy kill. Era now up to 13 Bloodstone charges. And Yoda some fun. Well, he went for the BKB. So the magic immunity is going to make him pretty potent in these team fights. I think that's a nice high ground item. It's, you know? it's also a nice thing up against Sing Sing. We saw him do it on day one, which is to pick up that Silver Edge. Even though it's become a little bit more expensive now, the Silver Edge, it could have disabled the passive of Axe, which would have taken away most of his damage. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, Sing Sing's looking like he's starting to build into that, but it's all a little bit too late. For the BKB, he's fine now. SF, what do you think he goes for next? Do you think a BKB is uh, necessary for him? Do you think the raw stats of SNY and the heal from Mech are good enough, and he can afford to go for a greedier item like Butterfly or Scotty? I I'd actually prefer to just see the Scotty come up. Uh, I don't think he's more bottom lane now in the sun. Just have to survive this initial engagement and then just survive through it. He's going to let the ulti go out in the moment, and Sashka jumps in, goes for the split. Minots is still here, trying to keep that heal coming in, and Undying sent out the five, but then again, he's still got the tombstone down. That's doing the work. Seal Kid, he can't stay alive long enough to call down, doing enough from the Tyracopter. It's still one for one trap. The Echo Slam from Colby controlling up Era, but he's still got enough time to get that Pulse Nova off, and the Culling Blade from Unison Farm. They'll turn around Era, running so quickly because of that Culling Blade buff up. There's your triple kill for the Axe. They find Necroman in the tree lines, but they cannot get the full team wipe up against Beat You. The TP is successful. But you'll see this regeneration kick in. 16 Bloodstone charges on the Lashrac. They're coming for bottom tier 3. Yeah, they might as well. Uh, they can probably just force whatever buybacks is possible, which are done right now for Burn United. Urshaker has a buyback, but obviously not going to use his. So they'll just get some good damage on the tier 3. Not sure if they really want to take the racks, though. Force well, out the glyph. They, they can take the range at least. Like, the range doesn't take too long to bring it down. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they know Brewmaster doesn't have his ultimate, as well as uh, Dragonite, his Elder Dragon form. So I suppose they would still be having a significant advantage if they wanted to go for it, but doesn't look like it. I would say back up, wait for Roshan. It's a longer Roshan. 
Uh, it's actually the maximum rush on yeah. two. Yeah, plays against Nip in many ways because they should have been able to just go force down that tier three and back up the Roshan, but that's not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure have a peek in. It's like, well, damn it. That was two out of the potential three minutes they had for Roshan, but no joy for them. But it's fine. There's no out of towers left to take out. Uh, you know, some farm, probably the one who's closest to BU at the moment, blinks himself away, but you could also look towards the mid lane. Sing Sing with his Shadow Blade just trying to scout out where they are. I'm fairly certain he went invis underneath the Observer Ward in the mid. Hence the rest of NIP have just bailed out of here. All right, Limp, until we have a gem. Limp decided that BKB was necessary for this game, so they're going to have three different BKBs. Axe um, already got his, both Eleshrek and SF getting theirs right now. So 10 second charges for the next team fight. Burden United have to find initiation. Essentially, if they hope to be able to win a fight, it's going to be through catching Nip by surprise and chain stunning down the DSF or the Leshrac before they can get off that BKB. Because they're definitely not going to do it to the Axe. Certainly the Axe not, is now walking no. around with a plate mail as well on top of his BKB and his Vanguard. I just don't think there's enough damage. And we sit at that point too with the Gyrocopter where we ask the question when does he become effective? Like, there's no way he can afford up a Monkey King bar before the next fight's going to begin. Do you just try and get something like a Crystalis and, and buy yourself the time? I know they'll probably, it will sacrifice your buyback if you've got it. My nuts, spin, spin, there's the spin, and too early on the dunk. He knew it was the only chance he had though. Yeah. Yeah, it had to try and get in the dunk before the heal came out essentially. And wasn't quite enough. Ninjas of Pajamas will still take a free Roshan. Bird United, even if they know, they shouldn't be trying to contest. Uh, they just got to try and split push as heavily as possible and hope that Nip don't push uphill. But I'm sure with this Aegis, they will an uh, an attempt a push uphill in the next five minutes. Sing Sing almost finished up that tower. They let him stay around a little bit longer so potentially they can catch up to him. As uh, he will go into that Shadow Blade. Not seeing dust, and there's your TP out. They're gonna find him, but there's no disable. So Sing Sing's out to safety. And the tier two tower was still denied in mid. You know, I don't think they really care at this point. You know what I would like to see for the next item on Lash Rack? What would you like to see? I would like to see the upgraded boots of travel. Because of the fact that he is level 15 and has 16 bloodstone charges, it pretty much means he has no death timer. So when they try and push uphill, and say the Lash Rack happens to be the first to die, He'll pretty much have no death timer whatsoever, and with the advanced boots of travel, he can actually just TP into one of his allies who's already deep inside the enemy base. How do you deal with two rainbow points? It's not possible. You can't. It, it, really, it really is impossible, man. That's, and that's actually beautiful. Like we, we saw it with the SF before on bottom when he bought back, and they just were able to find such huge amounts of damage that BU lost the fight because of this. You just use your money advantage, which is quite high. It's over 20,000 net worth Radiant's advantage to just win the game. Because that's all, all it really matters. Like, holding on to gold for a very long time doesn't achieve you anything. And Eero? Well, he really doesn't care about this tower. His regeneration is still 15, se uh, 15 a second. Yeah, he's willing to burn the Aegis here right in front of the enemy. Yep. Still like the only thing that's really cost BU is to use that cold app, but then again, here comes the big boys with, with the BKBs up and running. Necromancer at least got his, but he's realizing that we're protecting for the physical damage of Limp, who now winds up the ulti, but who is it really for that? And them dying tombstones keeping a lot of control, and the axe a perfect jump in. He wants the conflict. He's been stunned up, however, and he'll go through that shell grade. So there goes your gyrocopter. It's a double kill, and BU are being ravaged in their base. GG is the call. So game number one goes the way of ninjas in pajamas. Yeah, pretty straightforward victory, I would say, for Ninjas and Pajamas. They basically just outdrafted their opponent. Um, the, the draft itself was not bad for Burn United. The problem is their lanes were just so insufferable, right? They, they basically lost every single one of their lanes, and that makes it pretty easy for Ninjas and Pajamas to take an advantage and roll with it.